is an inspirational comedian. He has proven that you can be funny without being vulgar, with an authority as a master of ceremony. He is president of PC Entertainment Group, registered in Houston, Texas. Cheers. One of the most successful and talented Nigerian comedy export in the United States of America. He is a stand-up comedian, a promoter, a producer, an actor, a creative manager, and an event manager. Mr. of the Ministry is moving, Mr. of the Blood. Ladies and gentlemen, stand to your feet and put your hands together and show some love for the founder and host of the Be Yourself Comedy Show, Mr. MC. Now we are going to the campground. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. They said I should wear sunglasses when I call. Now I think Stevie Wonder is better than me now. So I'm going to take it off so I can see clearly. <laughs> Just gonna smoke with this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am happy to be here this evening. Are you happy to be here? Yeah. If you're happy to be here, make some noise! <laughs> Greet all my fellow Americans. I, I just want to thank you all for coming out tonight. You know, this is how we roll, this is how we do, you know what I'm saying? I'm rehearsing on how to be an American. I'm rehearsing on how to be an American because the best uh, citizen you can be in this way is an American. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a green card. I have a green card. It's not that I cannot go to Nigeria with my green card and come back safely. But my problem is this, I don't want to go to Nigeria. As I move from Benin to worry, I get kidnapped. <laughs> because as a green card holder, you are still in Nigeria, be? Yes. I will remain there forever. <laughs> this is what you hear on NTA News. A young Nigerian who traveled back to his country has been kidnapped by some Nigerian wonderful crazy Nigerian boys. The federal government has set up a committee to decide if they will release him or not. <laughs> My brother, I will remain there forever. But assuming, or oh, by the time I have the US passport, my brother, my sister, there's a difference between blue and green. <laughs> there's a difference between welcome home and how long are you staying? <laughs> so those of us that have visit visa, you know what I'm talking about. I find it very interesting whenever I go to the airport as I'm flying in or coming in from Canada or somewhere, I hear them ask them, welcome home. And people like us, they ask us, where did you go and where are you coming from? <laughs> I don't like it. So, I'm waiting for that moment when I travel to Nigeria as a US citizen. And I get kidnapped in worry. The ministry will be different. You will hear the headline on CNN young African-American who traveled to his father's country <laughs> has been kidnapped in the Nigerian Niger Delta area. <laughs> President Barack Obama has sent the Navy SEAL to bring it back home. That's what I'm waiting for. That's what I'm waiting for. That's what I'm waiting for. This country is special. I mean, you heard about the Ebola guy, the, the doctor who worked in Liberia. They had to not construct a special jet to break this to bring this guy back home. I mean, the, can you imagine one person that has an executive suite from Liberia to US for free? Your country. Which will soon be my former country. <laughs> Even if you have Apollo, all kind of disease, nobody care about you. That's the reason why I wore a blue suit this evening. Rehearsing on how to get used to blue things. 
Hallelujah. But as Nigerians, I keep telling people as a Nigerian, you don't have to. Why you pray for green card every day? Father, give me green card. Father, give me green card. You don't need any other green card as a Nigerian. You know why? What is the color of Nigerian passport? Eh uh eh. -huh. Uh -huh. Passport is passport. At least I'm not, I don't find it funny. The color of Nigerian passport. If you look at other countries that have the same color of Nigerian passport, so I begin to suspect we Nigerians. What is the color of the Iraqi passport? Green. Pakistan. Green. India. Green. Well, are they? <laughs> what is the color of uh, the UK passport? Green. What about uh, South Africa? Green. What about Ghana? Green. Ghana is blue or red, whatever it may be. Hey, so now, what is the color? What is the color? Blue? See? Ghana, they are very smart. They took the American passport color. That's why there's always pass supply in Ghana. So I recommend to Nigeria, if they are seeing this TV anywhere, change the Nigerian passport color and the ministry will be moving in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I want to give God praise for you know you for you guys coming out this evening. I, I find it very interesting. I'm so grateful. A lot of great friends that have come some out of town to come see, you know, share some time with me. I, I don't I, I don't cry. I'm an African man. <laughs> we cry inside. I, I want to give God praise. <laughs> I'm crying right now, so you just you can't see the tears. Yeah, I, I just want to give God praise for how God has been so wonderful to me in this country. Um, I used to live in London. <laughs> my brother, mm -mm. if you hear my story, you will pity me. I lived in London for some time, and I studied out there up to a master's degree. With masters, we do security job. I don't have anything against security job, but with masters. One day, me and my boy, Ola, Yoruba boy, we were working in the night on night duty. London Co. don't have respect. London Co. is not born again. The weather is cold and it was raining and we're under the atmosphere. So Ola called me and said, PC, I said yes. PC, I said yes. PC, I said yes. Hey, how many times did I call you? I said three times. I said, my brother. When I told my pastor I want to travel abroad, he prophesied to me. That go and possess the land. <laughs> My brother, is it the land? <laughs> I'm possessing coal in this place. Vapor coming out of my mouth every day. So he started crying, and I started crying. From crying, we started laughing, and we started praying. And we said, Father, take us to a land that we will possess. So that we'll be happy with you in the name of Jesus. And here we are, possessing and uh, doing the work of the Lord. Hallelujah. My ministry has moved from a rented apartment to the permanent site right now. I tell people, where you live can affect the way you behave. Right now in my neighborhood, I see some white men hold their dog, they're jogging. People of God, I'm jogging. And we're having national discussion. Tell your neighbor, change your environment. You know, especially if you have Jesus on your side. There's so much going on. I just want to give God praise, first of all, to my father. I don't know if I don't know where if you ever see this video because when I was growing up, he never wanted me to be a comedian. He wanted me to be a banker. Some of you know that I'm a banker, so I, I have a first degree and a master's degree, and I became a banker. But you know, anyhow, anyhow, now you go find your level. As stubborn as I am, I still find my way back to what I love to do, which is what I'm doing right now. So he 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 heard about me. Give God praise. Give God praise. So I wanted to encourage your children, whatever talent God has given to them, just support them. All right? Everybody cannot be a banker. I mean, everybody cannot be a doctor. Everybody cannot be a lawyer. Some of us are comedians. To make you laugh, we'll not cause you trouble, but at least we help you alleviate it. <laughs> Which is what we love to do. So he saw my name somewhere, MCPC somewhere. I don't know how he found out. Very stubborn man. And he called me and said, my friend, what name am I seeing all over the place? I said, which name? He said, MCPC. I said, Dad, you know when you go abroad, you got to change your sweat. He said, what is work? I said, swag is the ability to connive into the metaphorical air condition of the environment. So you can metamorphose into, you know, into the ministry very well. He said, my son, I will never call you MCPC. I did not give you MCPC. You go abroad and change your name. Well, I started blessing the man. There's a house that's been trying to complete for five years. The house has been completed right now to the glory of God. And I just set him a, a brand new 2012 Toyota Camry. And the man is thinking of marrying his second wife right now. <laughs> and I told him, Father, if you try it, we will disfather you. 
few days ago, he called me in the morning at about one o'clock. You know, Africans don't know time difference. They can call you anytime. <laughs> I saw two, three, five, six, eight. I said, hey, daddy, how far now? He said, huh? MCPC. <laughs> I say, Papa, money good. Say, my picking money good. <laughs> you need to see I'm cruising your, the camera you sent to me, the ministry is moving on my side too. <laughs> my father is the one sending me jokes now from Africa. I say, get one more way area. I don't want to do anyhow. I say, transfer it to an American joke. So, I say, want to encourage parents, encourage us, we children, to be what God has designed us to be. Let's celebrate that prayer one more time in the name of Jesus. I mean, seriously, when I look at women every day, I find it very interesting. Women I have discovered they are special. This life would have been so boring without women. This life would have been like somebody having two left legs without women. If there's, if there's no women in this place, please, this, I only gonna know if you'll be standing or sitting. But I've discovered that for everything that you give to a woman, woman will double it and give it back to you. For example, if you give woman love, she give you care. If you give woman gift, she give you attention. If you give woman good money, she give you better soup. <laughs> but if you give woman trouble, she will give you double trouble. <laughs> if you give woman heat, she will give you wahala. Please, all men clap for the women. Women are special. Women are special. And I realize that women are stronger than men. Men, you can think you're strong, you have muscles. Women are strong. Women rule the world. Women rule the world. I can start from the top to the bottom. All the big men you can think of, women brought them down. <laughs> For example, Anna Schwarzenegger, that one I ask her name. <laughs> ask her, no matter how woman is, ask her, ask her, a kite, a woman is a woman. <laughs> Even the CIA number one woman brought her down. Amma Ken, who wanted to run for campaign, campaign ran him. He finished. Even in the Bible, something. With his mighty power. He trying to catch up something. Nobody could get hold of something. A guy can use one hand to destroy many people. Then one day, they now want to call one Kukere Skele Wuwange. <laughs> yeah, well, with Brazilian weaver and Parovia hair. I said, don't worry. I know how to get something. If you want to know something secret, I know where it is. Don't worry. So this Kukere Skele Wuwange. Yeah, yeah, get one talk to something. Hey, Samsi, what is the secret of your power? I said, I'm a hell. I'm a hell. Even in the Bible too, Adam. If not because of Adam, we will not be paying bills right now. We'll just be enjoying life. No bill, no mortgage, no hustling like the way we are hustling now. But Adam was just relaxing in the garden. Mumu, he doesn't know what is going on. <laughs> Women, W for wisdom. M for now you talk so. <laughs> Adam was just relaxing in the cool evening. Not know what is going on. If with her wisdom mind, say, hey, Adam. I can imagine Adam being a Yoruba man and he has a big belly. Adam says, uh, come, say, uh. Adam say, I am here, kill a day. Uh, Why are you calling me? Say, Adam, come. If you want to be wise, look at this thing. Eat it. And I say, uh. Bring it, let's eat it. Adam ate. Oh, we are naked, though. And that's why we are hustling today. One more time, celebrate women. <laughs> women are too much. I, I was talking about my, my father uh, when, I was, when we were growing up in Africa. Can somebody help me with water? You know, it's you. My boys are dry. <laughs> somebody gave me water. Uh, when I was growing up, I want to give God praise for my, my father. If not because of him, <laughs> I will have so many baby mamas all over the place. Thank you, sir. Because when I was growing up, <laughs> I was always for me, fine boy. One time he called me, he said, look at you. Look at you. You're for me, fine boy. In my days, I was a fine, bombastic boy. <laughs> Women were running after me. Look at you, do fine boy. If you, you, a man is not supposed to be lazy. And he told me one thing that I work with every day. That the size of the dog chasing you will determine your speed in life. That is deep. And I'll explain. You are from Najoko. No, so you be man of God before you throw fire. <laughs> He's from a very rich home. He's from a very poor home. For example, 
The dog chasing this man is as big as this building. The white chasing is like a, a puppy or a small pussycat. So what does that mean? You have to know where you are coming from to determine the kind of decision you should take in life. Some of us we were born into some dangerous <laughs> mommy water spirit environment. <laughs> witches and wizards, especially where I came from. Where I came from in a dust state, it took us 300 years to, for us to have airport. <laughs> you know what? Everybody there is flying. <laughs> witches and wizards. It was Martin of Fire that came to destroy their ministry. <laughs> By fire! Anybody flying tonight? Da! People were hanging on top of barbed wire in the morning. <laughs> I, I give God praise for that man because he, he, my father is the only man that can look at you and beat you for what you are thinking. He's a crazy man. One day he walked up to me. He said, hey, you. I said, who? Say you, come here. I said what? I said come here. Lay down. The guy gave me solid seven stroke of the why. So you are thinking that you drink beer when you go out. I'm beating you right now ahead of time. Please celebrate my father for me. Celebrate my father for me. I've come to realize that living, being an African living in America is, is quite challenging, especially those of us that have lived out there with this our African as don't our mouth with Padre and Negusi. And you Americans have a way of exposing us. You people hear what we are saying, you pretend as if you don't hear us. Abi? One day I went to McDonald's, even the McDonald's are not correct, McDonald's. <laughs> I went there, I said, Yes, how can I help you? I said, I want to buy burger. <laughs> you know how they say? What did you say? People not gather. I said, shoo, for burger. Where am I buying? Now you going to shout. I just want to buy burger. I said, what is burger? I said, madam, burger, bread, and meat in between. I said, what is that? I said, okay, number five, number five. Make one for no day. I beg. They hear us. You know, I, just, I don't know if it has happened to you before. When an American begins to like, what are you saying? What are you saying? I get offended. It happened to you, right? Can you listen? Then when I begin to explain, I speak what? Quiz English. Who we'll asked you if you speak Quiz English? <laughs> True love story. Me and Shayu Brown, he was coming to town for a gig. Uh, I think we were trying to fix something on, on his cable or airport. You know all those automated phones? For, no <laughs> for whatever, press one. For this, press two. My brother, I was the one on phone. I thought I was better than Shayu Brown. You need to come and hear what phone said to me. I said, customer service. <laughs> say, what did you say? <laughs> I press zero. Wrong option. I say, shoo. You know, zero is always the last escape. You just press zero. So now, invalid selection. Could you tell me briefly what you want? I say, customer service. <laughs> My brother, we take the help. I get the phone to Shayi Brown. Shayi Brown, I was pass. <laughs> With this heavy Yoruba, say, ah, kill a day. Customer service, ah. Come on, service, no, me, ah. Ah, kill a man, bye. It is great, you know, it's quite challenging living here, you know. I applaud all Africans who live in various countries to live in other countries in the world. Because most Americans, most English people don't even have their own country's passport. They don't even know the airport. You know, I come around, and, oh, where are you coming from? Coming from Canada, from England. Wow. You from you travel a lot, you know? I said, boy, you, you are the one that have the passport that can take you to everywhere <laughs> apart from heaven. Why? I like Africans. We hustle. We don't give up. You know, the blood of Jesus. <laughs> that is the anointing of the Lord. The anointing is moving. Money ground, there's anointing upon your ministry. <laughs> You know, I applaud Africans. People say Nigerians are terrorists. Nigerians are never qualified to be called terrorists. You know why? For you to be a terrorist, you have to be on time. <laughs> because they give you a bump, it's nine, eight, seven, six, five, three. I forgot now. Two, one. 
Boom. If you give a bomb to Nigeria, they will kill themselves. <laughs> Imagine that. They tell you, if, uh, if event is 7 o'clock, uh, at 9 is where we go to the bathroom. <laughs> at 10.30 is where we go and check, you know, open the car. Ah, Mama Sikira, ah, where are we going? So, where is the place there? Ah, I don't know. <laughs> at 11 o'clock, come and see Nigeria eating padediam at 11 o'clock. And I begin to wonder, no wonder people have big belly. Because you eat padediam at 12 o'clock in the morning. Why well, do we not have pot belly? You know, but seriously, I applaud Nigerians. I, I, I celebrate myself as a Nigerian or as a former Nigerian to be. <laughs> because the way to go is the American way. You know, having a combination of green and blue, ah, uh, the earth is too small for me to walk on. I will fly. <laughs> right. But at this time, ladies and gentlemen, I want to give God praise for the wonderful woman that I have gotten married to. Thank you. <laughs> One of my very good friends who we started comedy together way back in school, 1996. He's here. He was the MC in my wedding. And he came in all the way from Port Harcourt. And uh, he calls me hybrid Ajak Bako. I mean, the, the, the toppest level of Bako. Don't mind this color. We are the one in school. We don't have shoes. But if you see us dress, you, you will suspect yourself. <laughs> Listen, I used to respect... We're not that poor. We're not that rich. We're confused. <laughs> we're not poor. We're not rich. We're just in between. But I knew I had a future. Those days, if I see anybody who uses perfume, hey! Big boy! Because perfume, uh -uh, you use perfume, or anybody who uses sardine to make stew, or anybody who eats egg, big boy. Especially my roommate. My roommate had has a brother in this U.S. who normally sends shoes to him. Sends shoes and, you know, perfume. So one day he traveled. I thought he had gone. I took one of the perfume. Everywhere. As soon as I finished, the door opened. My friend entered. And he said, who used my perfume? I said, I don't know. I think it's an angel that came here. He said, my brother, you can't tell me that your father, your mother, if you ever try it, you know, go better for your grandmother, your father that has died already. This guy insulted me because of perfume. <laughs> but today, perfume is in trouble. <laughs> As I'm standing here right now, I'm wearing five. <laughs> I have told myself, whatever embarrassed me in the days when I was still in the lower ministry, I will embarrass it now. I don't care. Way back in the days, we are the one who wear coat. There's a difference between coat and suit. <laughs> suit is what I'm wearing right now. It looks comfortable. My brother, coat is not your portion. <laughs> coat is a kind of garment. If you wear it under the AC, you are sweating. <laughs> coat is a garment, not by you buy it. Somebody gave it to you. As a matter of fact, the person that gave it to you did not buy it. Somebody gave it to him. The person that gave it to him, it was a missionary who came from England that gave it to the person that gave it to you. Even the missionary himself, he did not buy it. It was Salvation Army that gave him. Coat? Ah. My wife got out for me now. If you check my closet, suit, coat is no longer my portion. And I send that grace to you in the name of Jesus. If you have worn coat before, you will never wear again. In the name of Jesus. I give God praise. This is more, you know, a way to give God praise for what God has done for me. But when we came here, it wasn't easy, you know. But I love the, the kind of love Americans show to people. It is, you know, comparing Engl England and, and America, it is, in England, it's different. Here in America, you don't need to know someone for them to greet you. All right? They can like... They just smile. Uh -huh. Who be that? <laughs> At the airport, the first time I arrived from England, I'm like, what's up, man? I'm like, what, me? You don't know me. Why are you greeting me? In England, everybody mind their business. Even here in America, like today, I don't know what happened to my car, but I give God praise. I drove my car to the gas station to fill up. The thing refused to start. I just, I just said, God, I give you praise. So I came out. Uh, luckily enough, I had, what do you call it? Is it jump cable, whatever they call it. I just heard it. I don't know what to call. My wife was busy cooking. So I just stood. Less than one minute, this white guy drove by. Say, said, yeah, man, you need some jump? I said, my brother, I need jump in my life. Come and jump. <laughs> I say, yeah, thank you, man, my fellow America to be. <laughs> yeah, 
is I, I love the Americans. I love the Americans because America has swag to everything they do. If anything, America will not do it like any ordinary human being. For example, walking alone, walking, anybody can do work. Even animal can walk. I'm walking now. But America will not do it that way. We have their swag. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. <laughs> I because just I'm not getting it. You know, you know, they ask swag. Even Obama. You see Obama not bust, man. So you know, my father. <laughs> you know? I was in the barber shop where I went to have my hair cut. <laughs> With this African head. My guy who cut my hair is an African American. So he, I sat down. So he's walking. I'm like, yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, man. Hey, yo, hey, yo, PC, man. Hey, your head is funny, man. I say you have an African head. <laughs> it's an anointed head from Africa. Let's put your hands together for yourself for coming out tonight. I feel so great. All right, I'm not going to take too much of your time at this time because we have a lot of other comedians that have come here to make your Labor Day a very wonderful one. God gave me this vision to have people come laugh, at, you know, just stress away under the atmosphere of the grace of God because God has been so good to me. And if he hasn't been good to you, I don't know, but I think he's good to everyone. <laughs> All right, so I, I want to give God praise for your life for coming. And I believe that as you walk away from here, your life will never remain the same. It doesn't matter what you're going through. I believe that something is going to happen to you, your life, your job, your marriage, everything that you do. You will go back home a better person, a better wife, a better husband, a better wife to be, a better husband to be. You know, God will meet you at the point of your need. But I advise all sisters, if you are not married, learn how to package yourself. It's true because men, we are moved by what we see. I'm a man of God, but I'm, yeah, I'm preaching, madam. It is, only, it is only in America that you don't know who is the preacher. Like a typical American church. You don't know who is preaching. You don't know who is the congregation. One typical deeper life man, worry, worry man as a deeper life, came to America for the first time. As he was preaching. The Bible said oh, uh, John was the whatever forerunner of Jesus. And as he was moving, one of the other preach, preacher, John the Baptist, yes, he was the man. The man said, sure. So come, 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 come. Now you be preacher. <laughs> your father. <laughs> Pastor Cosmo says, your father, your real father, if you talk here again. <laughs> it's all good. But at this time, ladies and gentlemen, we, we're about to take this thing to the next level. Uh, if you like what you see, you know, give us a call. Support the ministry. Support the vision. This ministry is for families, pastors, deacons, uncles, everybody. Uh, you, you, we're not going to hear anything that's not going to edify your body, that's not going to edify the body of Christ tonight. Everything you're going to hear tonight is to the glory of God. Amen. And you're going to go away smiling inside of you. Have you ever seen yourself smiling at yourself before? You come back and say, Chris. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> it's me be this. It's me. Sure. Is it correct English? It's me be this. I always tell people. <laughs> that's the correct English where I come from. I always tell people, please, if you cannot speak correct English, that's why women. <laughs> Speak correct pigeon. <laughs> I went somewhere to go and perform. I saw these ladies. Oh my God! MCPC! Is this you for real? Oh my God! MCPC, you're so delirious. I said, yeah? <laughs> delirious. Can I take a Sophia with you? I said, Sophia! <laughs> All right. Back to business. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to welcome somebody. You all know him. Some of you don't know him. But in case you don't know him, he's coming on right now. His name is Femi the Entertainer. Let's put your hands together for him. This one can never. This one, hello? Hello. This one can never. This one can never. This one can never. This one can never. This one I said, Houston, make some noise! I see the VIP people up front here. Yeah. The VIP, we don't need to. VIP, make some noise! Yeah. Uh, I'm on this band, I die. Oh. I'm a clap for this band, I beg. Well done. As 
MCPC will say the ministry is moving forward. Uh, when I started, uh, when I said I want to start doing comedy, okay, so again, my name is comedian Femi, Femi the entertainer, Femi Obama, the most blessed, the most highly favored, the most handsome, family friendly comedian. Make some noise for your boy one more time! All right, all right, so let me ask you this. How many of you, when you were young, your parents wanted you to be a doctor? Raise your hand. Okay, some of you, your parents didn't have high hope for you. What's gonna happen? If you were young, your parents wanted you to be a doctor, let me see your hand. Okay, okay, so how many of you were successful in disappointing your parents? Okay, so I'm not alone. Disappointment number one. Okay, so my father retired nuclear physicist. Just hear the word, nuclear physicist. Me! I now come and now say I want to be a comedian. Can you imagine the pressure? So here's what happened. My father, he just assumed that I have anointing to be a doctor. Here's how I knew I didn't have anointing to be a doctor. One day in class, how many people remember integrated science? We did integrated science class. Okay, okay, okay. So you are with me. Teacher said, Femi, name the element that is responsible for carrying hemoglobin in the bloodstream. Come and see silence. <laughs> see, are you deaf? Can you not hear me? I said, what is the element responsible for carrying hemoglobin in the bloodstream? I said, teacher, I don't know. Teacher slapped my face. Say, what? You have been in my class for two times and you don't know what element carries hemoglobin in the bloodstream. For future reference, the element that carries hemoglobin in the bloodstream is iron. I said, teacher, I work out for you. You mean say iron? Where will they take iron cloth? <laughs> now this our body. What's going to happen for you? <laughs> Wall of Jericho. Jesus. Moneygram. They, they need to pay more money to keep their sponsorship up here. Did their money expire? <laughs> what was I saying? Eh? Uh -huh. Teacher slapped my face, say, get out of my class, you have no hope, go to art class. Now, I have to now go and tell my dad, because my dad had promised me, he said, if you go to medical school, at this time I'm 17, he said, if you go to medical school, I will buy you a car, I will rent you an apartment. Oh boy, 17 years for Niger, buy a car, apartment. My father had already bought clothes, he said, Femi, here are the clothes I want you to be wearing during your residency. Five years later, during your residency, five years later, I was working as a residence inn. <laughs> Sometimes you need to be specific with your prayers. You need to, you need to you need not enunciate properly. So now, I have to get the chest to go and tell my dad and say, Dad, um, I don't want to study medicine. As a matter of fact, I want to study performing arts. The first art that my father performed was on my face. <laughs> with a slap. Say, what? And I don't know how many of you here, you have fathers, uncles, like when they are angry, they remove the glasses from their face. What? Performing art as if the glasses is not supposed to help you see better. What kind of nonsense is that? You need to have the right anointing, the right skill for everything I've noticed in this country of America. Even when it comes to the right accent. Because back in school, back in, in, in college, right here in America, okay, so they were promoting a party. So... Um, like MCPC was saying, he said, the, he said African Americans they have swag. You know, mathematics has taught us that the shortest distance between two points, what is it? A straight line, Abby. What will African American do? <laughs> do we do a semicircle? <laughs> Doing geometry all around. What's up, girl? Mm -hmm. So, party was going on. They were trying to promote a party. They sent out two people to go and promote the party. First, an African American. And the American, American, African American boy got there, hey man, that party is gonna be the bomb. It's gonna be a rap battle. We gonna have a blast. They sent out the exchange student from Iraq to go and say the same thing. This is what people heard. Er, my friend, Azebardi, Zier is going to be a bomb. Eh? Bomb for where? 
You relax, relax, relax. But... And then... And then it's going to be a rap jihad. Jihad in what? And afterwards, there is going to be a blast. Before he finished promoting that party, that part was in Guantanamo Bay. You have to have the right accent for everything, for the right job that you do. One of the major things that we fight against in this country is our name. You know? How many of you here, you have ever put your name inside Microsoft Word and you get that red squiggly line? <laughs> Computer, where you buy, with your own money, is discriminated against you. One more time, college story. So, I remember when I first started college, um, the professor, his life is easy. Because nobody in that school could say my name. His life is easy when he's doing the roll call until he gets to my name. John Smith, present. Jane Doe, present. Demarcus Johnson, present. Jose Hernandez. I can usually tell when he's about to say my name. Because there's like, there's like a 45 second pause. African name is the only name that you have that the police is terrified to pull you over. Police pulled me over one time. This is exactly what it looked like. Last is the registration, sir, please. You know why I pulled you over, mister? Slow down next time, sir. <laughs> it's serious. And then on top of that, we'll have children. I will now name these children mercilessly. My daughter's name. Temila Yolua. Yes, sir. We are. It has carries many. But listen. It has disadvantage. My daughter's name, Temila Yolua. Tinkamo, small picking in America, Temila Yolua. That is seven syllables, 13 letters, no space, no underscore, no hyphen, no nothing, just 13 letters back to back to back to back to back. The first day of kindergarten, the first assignment they gave them was to write their name. Everybody else, so their parents named three letter names like Tim, Tom, Bob, Sue, Lee, Pat. All of them finish their job. Ten minutes, easy. After thirty minutes, come and see my daughter. The right. One hour, she was still there. Two hours, she never finished. Three hours, everybody went to recess and came back. She was still there. Even the teacher was frustrated. She just said, um, Can I just call you T? <laughs> All right, T, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make this a take home project so you can take home to your parents who caused this problem to start with, okay? <laughs> Daddy, you now see my point. However, however, I will not stop. The, the next child that I have will have a really, really strong, you know, strong name. You understand what I'm saying? But the one that I don't now like is that when we now come to America, we now be naming our children name of extremely Caucasian names. You can name Mary is fine. Joseph is good. Robert is okay. I know nobody is doing it here, but have you seen African people name their children Ashley, uh, Heather, oh my God, Brooke, You can name your daughter Ashley all you want. Her last name is still Okoronko. <laughs> Ashley Okoronko. Heather Balogun. Skylar Ajanle Koko. What? 
It doesn't match. But know this. Know this that America is a place which gives you the freedom to change your name to whatever you want to change it to. I'm from Kwara State in Nigeria. We have peculiar names. All right? A person, a person called Busari Raimi can come to America, go to the clerk's office, say, I don't want to bear this name anymore. I want to change my name from Busari Raimi to Buster Rhymes. <laughs> Taju Makajuala, TJ Max. <laughs> we are from Ipada. You are not fooling anybody. Tara Bank, call it Tara Banks. <laughs> Joseph Wabidemi, Joe Biden. Kane, they call our late Kenneth Cole. Jayo Lazu Beru, Jay Z. It's a free world, ladies and gentlemen. Some great things happened this year. Some great things happened this year. Football, fans, soccer fans, you know, it's not football, it's soccer. I mean, they're calling it football now, which is nonsense, but soccer fans in the house, make some noise. Chelsea fans in the house, make some noise. That's my. That's my brother right there. That's my brother. What are you wearing? This boy get chest. To so wear Manchester United jersey. Blues right there, B. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Is it G U is it is it Gunners? Is it G U N N or G O N E R S? World Cup, I was excited about World Cup this year. Uh, even though my country, Nigeria, did not win, we got to the round of 16, I'm satisfied because I understand that the only way that our Nigerian team will win the World Cup is on Xbox 360. <laughs> and I know that so many people did really well, and Yema did really, really well. So my, teacher, my sister is a teacher in, uh, in Nigeria. She was asking one of our students, or all of our students, in class, she said, um, name me an example of a carnivore. One child that knows book very well, teacher's pet, she quickly raised up her hand, excuse me, ma, example of a carnivore is, example of a carnivore is a lion. Teacher said, clap for her. Somebody give me us another example. Another boy stood up. Excuse me, ma, example of a carnivore is a tiger. Clap for her. Another person stood up. Excuse me, ma. Example of a carnivore is Luis Suarez. <laughs> Clap for her. <laughs> Houston, are you having a good time tonight? And uh, yeah, I think, I, I really, really do think that Nigerian sports, I'm not happy when I go to Nigeria and everybody's watching English Premier League. It doesn't make me happy when I know that we have our own Nigerian Premier League. It doesn't make me happy. But I think we need to improve. You know, if you get to America, you see the way they name sports teams in America. There's a team used to be in this, in this city. The name of the, the, the football team in this city used to be what? Houston Oilers. Who remembers that? Why do they call it Houston Oiler? Because there are so many oil companies in this place. Shell, they here. Chevron, they here. Who else is here? Konoko is there. Uh, hey, Exxon, Konoko, everybody is here. It makes sense. Houston Oiler. Florida Gators. If you go to Florida, alligator plenty for there. Miami Dolphin. And follow me. Miami Dolphin. If you go to Miami, Dolphin Day. I look at the fixing of Nigerian Premier League. I saw Worry Wolf. <laughs> Where we see Wolf on Niger? <laughs> Not only that, Worry Wolf. Because you need to name your team based on something that is related to the city that we, which they represent. Worry Wolf was playing Niger Tornadoes. What? <laughs> Have we even seen Well Wind? Talk about Tornado for Nigeria. I have a proposition and I, want, I really, really want to talk to the people in the Nigerian Premier League to allow me to name the teams. You'll be hearing something like, Wadi Oil. Not Oil, oh. Oil, O-Y-E-L, Wadi Oil. <laughs> Niger Delta Kidnappers. <laughs> Lagos, 
Lekki Flood. In America, they have San Francisco 49ers. We will have Yanakpaja 419ers. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, something great happened to me this year. Um, uh, I was named top five comedian in the McDonald's Gospel Fest uh, out of the... Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. All the support that I've gotten from my brother, Shea Brown, uh, MCPC, all the guys that, are, you know, that God has just used to surround me is just amazing. Uh, so it's like a, it's a multicultural thing, you know, for you to come out of your culture and go and tell jokes to, you know, people who don't really understand your culture, I think is, I think is something that the Lord has enabled me to do. And with that, I've been able to go to visit several churches and, you know, I minister in several churches. I notice when I go to the white church, are you seeing that white people are brief? Their service is brief. They start at 9 o'clock, finish at 9.15, everybody goes home. <laughs> Even the praise and worship is brief. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. And then they will say, now dance unto the Lord. <laughs> now that's with... Unlike the way they do it in African American church. You know, African American church is the only church that you can go and you can hear singing and preaching at the very same time. And it's both done by the pastor himself. And if you notice, everything he says is a rhyme. How many people, because I, I, I remember from uh, uh, Preachers of LA, when Bishop Ron Gibson was telling Dietrich Hardin, he said, it's good that you didn't allow your setback to cause you to sit back. They, they, if you know rhyme, they know the talk If you know rhyme, go to, next time you go to African American church, watch out, you will hear something like this. Glory to God, hallelujah. God got a blessing for you. You can have it, but you got to reach out and grab it. Yeah. Hallelujah. You might be in chains like Shadrach, Meshach, and that bad Negro. But God's about to take you all the way from zero. All the way to hero. Hallelujah. Yo, change might be strange and your money might be funny. You could be a deacon sneaking to the strip club. You might not even have a GED. But turn to somebody, tell them I got a G.O. Yeah. Hallelujah. You are now here. You are now here. Let's go to church. Let's go. Amen. And I know that the reason why the Lord has been asking us all to do this, like MCPC has been saying, you know, I have a vision that one day, you can call it unrealistic, but that one day, everybody will become born again. Can you imagine a world, yes, can you imagine a world where everybody is born again, and including celebrities and politicians? And not only do they become born again, they become deacons and pastors. You know who the senior bishop would be? Be none other than, none other than Barack Obama himself. You just see Obama come to church one day. Uh, praise God. Now, well, well, offering time. Blessing time. Now, well, if you're here, and uh, you make more than $250,000 a year, uh, you ought to be willing. You ought to be willing uh, to pay a little more in time to know. Now, now, shall we pray? Uh, close your eyes. Uh, I'm watching you. Thank you. Now, I know we're in Texas, and a lot of you are Republicans, and a lot of you didn't vote for me. <laughs> but still, close your eyes. Shall we pray? Uh, our Father, uh, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your will uh, be done on Capitol Hill. as it is in heaven. Uh, 
Give me this day. My approval ratings. Uh, forgive my unfulfilled promises. As we forgave Bush for his unfulfilled promises. Lead me not into the hands of Fox News. For you have delivered me from Romney. For thine is the kingdom, the power and glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. God bless America. Thank you. Cheer. One more time. Give it up for Femi. When I came into this country, they told me in everything you say, put sup, man. Anything you say, so you can flow. Sup, man. So I arrived, told the taxi man, sup, man. So he said, what? Sup, man. <laughs> so where are you going? I said, yeah, I'm going to the holiday in hotel. Sup, man. I said, what the, what the heff? I said, yeah, that's what's up, man. <laughs> I went to Walmart to go and buy. I was looking for kerosene. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, we all grew up with kerosene and charcoal. People are doing as if I'm the only one who grew up in the village here. Yeah. It's not right, though. It's not right. <laughs> so I went to Walmart to go and buy um, shutters. Um, <laughs> Insecticide. <laughs> uh, I couldn't find it, so I, I thought the guy say, "Yo, where's your shutters?" I said, "What?" I said, "Shutters." What is that? I said, "What's up, man?" Shutters. Win, 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 win. Oh, you mean insecticide? I said, "Yeah, what's up, man?" I went to Ross. I was looking for scent. I mean, uh, perfume. I told the lady, "You have scent here." So what is scent? I said, S -s -s -s. "Oh, you mean perfume?" I said, "That's what's up, man." So I was like, "What's up, man? What's up, baby?" One Nigerian man saw me. He said, "Hey, my brother, are you new?" I said, "Yes, I'm new." He said, "My brother, this is your soap, man. Not too much, oh. It's too much." Put your hands together for Femi one more time for coming around. All right, coming to the stage. Next, this guy is a crazy human being. I can say, positive crazy. What are we doing? He's a, he plays the bass guitar, he plays the drum. He's a conductor. We're in the choir together in school. I used to conduct the choir. And I played a little of drums, not too professional. And I sing as backup, tenor. We're the one who normally hmm at the back. They don't give us microphone, we stay behind people that have microphone. So our voice does not go into the microphone. Because we are singing on the right padlock, not even off key. Padlock. But this guy is highly talented. He studied uh, mass communication in school. Then we all went our various ways to chase our destiny. But whether you like it or not, if you guys are meant to be friends, God will have a way to put you guys back together. I've chased my financial career. He chased his own entertainment. But one way or the other, I see from myself back to the event which I did today. All the way from Port Harcourt, which is where my wife came from. All right, I have some rivers. Any rivers person in the house? And no fish. Those boys, if you're married, then you go chop fish tire. If I'm having belly pain, my wife say, ah, honey, fish, pepper soup. If I have headache, honey, fish, pepper soup. If I cannot go to the toilet, honey, fish, pepper soup. I say, now, nah, wow. I will give that to fish. <laughs> fish is growing in my nose. I want to give this wonderful shout out now that I'm talking about Portaco. When I came into this country, I didn't know nobody. I came into this country from England with $3,000. I converted. I tried now, be. Yeah, uh, please, I tried. Me, my wife, and my, and my daughter. She was little. She was born one year old. We came in. It was about 2,000 pounds. So, so when I changed it to dollar, a hammer. By the time I, I was staying in the hotel, I don't know no one. We only got the green card. 
in Tampa, Florida, where the ministry was not moving. Because <laughs> Tampa, it be like Ibadan. I don't, I know I've been there before, but the place is no, no activities. So every month they will take every week two hundred fifty dollars as my hotel fee. I say, hey, when I stay one month, how much be that? I say, my brother, where will I start from? I say, father, relocate me where my milk and honey will flow. So, and I had a dream. I saw Houston, Texas. Hallelujah. Real life story. Now, I want to come to Houston. I don't know nobody in Houston. But I went to www.rccgna, I think it's .org, and I searched for a name, a random name. And I picked the name, and I called him, a pastor. And I said, sir, we are from London. We are members of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, London. We don't know anybody in Houston, but we are coming to Houston for the first time. We need help. Help us. He said, that is okay. No problem. <laughs> the Lord will do it. I said, ah. I said this man, I just accepted. I don't know him. I don't know. He doesn't know me. So, long story short, we bought our ticket, brushed the dollars, arrived at Hobby. We are at the airport. I'm describing myself. It's okay. Me, I am lighting complexion. I'm wearing a white shirt and this. He said, me, I'm black. I guess small belly, you know. <laughs> I'll be running now, but the thing is not going in. <laughs> I'm outside. Come. I don't know. He doesn't know me. A, a Yoruba name. He picked me and my wife, my child, and myself down to the house, to their house. Before we came, the man is married to a potter called woman too. And of course, fish pepper soup was with him. People of God, I ministered to my bosom and the ministry was never the same. I lived in their house. It was in their house that I got the first job. They have an extra car. I used to manage. I used to work in, uh, I'll tell you my life story. I used to work in a call center called ACS. It's a popular place where Nigerian work. Unlimited over time. They say, how many hours do you want to work? I say, what is your official? They say, 14 a week. I say, what is your overtime? They say, unlimited. I say, you go see worker. <laughs> Nigeria, with that aggressive. I say, go see faithful worker. People of God, 6 o'clock, I'm waiting for them to open the office. They open. Hello? I was supporting Sprint. My asset and my name did not support the job. They come in, hello, this is what... <laughs> This is Polika of Sprint. How can I help you? So, what did you say? I said, this is Polika of Sprint. How can I? That's my name. Oh. So, what? What the F? Is that a name? I said, yes. So, what's the meaning? I said, ask your father. Why are you trying to frustrate me? My name will take five minutes. At the end of the week, my supervisor called me. He said, uh, Polika, <laughs> we're going to have to show you the door. I said, which door? I didn't know that in America, when they say, I will show you the door, that means not fire. I said, Father, anybody that wants this only job that I have now, $10 per hour, or limited over time, I wake up in the morning, I go there, I from there to my bed, after service, I go there, you will not fire me. I said, why? He said, because you take too much time in taking a phone call i said eh. i now realize that this is my name that's making me waste my time polycap i said okay calling my dad calling my burial polycap you are late to rest for now your new name is now pc i take the p at the beginning c at the middle and the ministry has been moving any of you here call me polycap we will fight Shaggy Brown, behave yourself. Back to my testimony. And this Potter called wonderful woman, married to a Yoruba man, a pastor in the redemption of God. You know, we stayed there. It was there, and I rented my house, uh, West Park, and guess now, as you remember, five seventy-five, five hundred and seventy-five dollar per month. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that man. And the woman whose food I ate first when I came into the city, whose bed I slept on, whose car I drove first, they are here tonight. 
See, I told you Africans don't cry. The tears won't come out. I said, no, 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 go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. I'm trying not to let the tears come out. So whenever I wake up and I look at my the little house, the big house God has blessed me with, and I say, this is me. This is me. I left my parents when I was 16. I'll be hustling. So I was 16 years old. I haven't seen my parents since 2006. But God has been the one keeping me. Give me a good wife who won the US visa lottery. There is a gentleman, there is God. Even Mama Nigeria said there is God. I don't care what you're going through. Whatever you're going through, if God can take me from somebody who sleeps in the living room of aunties and uncles. You know when you stay with somebody in Nigeria, you don't have option. Even in my house today, when my wife cooks, my wife loves to cook for people. Uh, not be soon, I've got to come my house. Oh. <laughs> she loves to cook for people. But do you know that even up to now, when I go to the pot of soup, I can't even take a piece of meat. You know why? Because I stay with people. It's in my head. Because whatever they give you is what you eat. I then say, honey, this is your house. This is your food. Eat. I say, eh, okay. Let me eat. But I want to give God praise. Ladies and gentlemen, the man of God and the woman of God, God used to bless us when we came into this country. It's here tonight. Pastor and Mrs. Peter Olosha. Rise up, rise up. Let's rise up, rise up, rise up. Sure, Pastor, when you picked me up at the airport, you never knew I was. I do this right. He never knew what I was. But this is me who you picked up 2009. The ministry has moved. And I know you are glad to see me today. And your beautiful wife, Fish Pepper Soup. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Portaco, River State, my illos, I present to you. Thank you so much for the love. Thank you. Thank you. I am very ungrateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, please, before he called, before he called, please, before he called, I've been there backstage. I know see the pastor where I said Polycap and his wife. Where the pastor? Pastor, God bless you. I'm coming too. I need to tell you, eh? I need to tell you, we will never win lottery. As I go back, I go put like 500 entries. One must enter. By the time they do, they should bomb you. Good one. You both should gather for a little jungle life. Allah me, lo lo, eba eba. Just catch one. Expect me. Hey, God bless. That is how I should be. Accept people that you don't know. You know. And they tried to imagine for Bible when Elijah they died inside forest. <laughs> Hungry, they buy him. God can't tell us, say, go meet one widow. Say, she go give you something to chop. Elijah went, can't tell the woman, make me small bread. The woman still explained to him, man of God, this small. I can't get bread where you see so. 
Now for me and my children to shop and buy. Man of God see the tell us, hey, go make my own fence. And the woman they go, hey, where are you? If you get small, small and pico. Add for me. I can't they imagine the woman no argue. I they imagine if now worry. You tell woman may go make food. He can't tell you say not the last one. As a man of God, he can't tell her, madam, go make my own. He go, he go very laugh you. <laughs> man of God. If nobody say Bible say touch not my anointing, I will slap you. <laughs> I did explain my predicament to you. You they tell me make I still go make. You should say that God send you. Yeah. That I say evil. Elijah said we can't look God. You should say that the address be this. <laughs> All right. Hey, hey, where this instrumentalist? Please come back. I am. My spirit is high. I want to start with a song. You know, I sing. Yeah, I sing. I sing, and uh, my spirit is is high tonight. It's my first time in America. Yes, Martha Luna. Yes, it's my first time. Those people they fall our hand for Nigeria. I say American Embassy. Now the only place where they make Nigerians humble. No matter your yes, no matter your status. Now American Embassy, you go go. You go see honorable or a senator. They tell security guard, how are you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they tell the gate man where they you have to be humble. Because if you do gra gra go inside, they'll not give you. Now they're gonna laugh you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they tell you come back again. <laughs> And to get this visa, man, leave. This song, this song, now nah, guys, please, eh, it's a reggae beat, eh, reggae beat. Just now, nah, let me tell you, this song. Wait, wait, wait. Let me first explain the song, right? Now, this song is this song is a spiritual song. Uh, when I sang this song in 2012, people were falling under the anointing. People were, in fact, a lot. Okay, let's start. Let's start. Just give me. You will express the song now. Yo, come on. Yeah. All right. Brother, also. Anything reggae, man. My head is full, man. Come on. All right. All right, yeah. Come on. Right. Hold on, wait. Hold on. One second. One second. Now, this song is high. This song is a reggae song, as you know. You have to listen to the lyrics to understand the song. So I want to see people fall under the anointing again. Come on, let's go, guys, let's go. Come on. Ah! Here they come. Here they come. Hey, hold on, hold on. This song was written by my grandfather. This song has been sung in all the crusades in Nigeria. You cannot even. Right, let's go, let's go, guys, let's go. Come on! Hey, hey, come. This song, you need to be spiritually connected to understand what I'm singing. Because you have to flow with me. Come on, guys, let's go, let's go. Come on, yeah. Song is no song. Now all keep me at thing. On the five, on I go kill. All right, guys, thank you so much. You see, since I came here, I have been quarrelling, and I don't know why English is so confusing. MCPC was saying it. Three weeks I spent here. You know what I'm saying? If I involve people talking to me, I don't go mind. Why my own brother? We will get the same complexion. Come and tell me, how you doing? How you doing? I say, huh? How you doing? 
my guy, relax. All of us stay foreign land. The one where they even vest me. I go one dinner last week. As I said, dinner is set. I go outside. I don't see one food where I feature up. <laughs> Everything I leave, 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 leave. <laughs> now I say, which kind leave? Why would I not put palm oil? Make me for you at once. <laughs> now what can I make vegetable soup? Which kind leave, leave, leave with this? Which kind? You know, I don't know. Because the thing when they make me chop. Now I don't feel butting my shirt. All right, see, English is, uh, for some time now, I've not been speaking English because English is confusing. <laughs> All right, but well, as you're seated now, please, let's, let's, let's feel free. Please, just greet your neighbor. Just greet your neighbor. In Chinese language, say, neighbor. Neighbor. Ya. <laughs> say it well now. Say, neighbor. Neighbor. Ya. <laughs> now, neighbor, reply. I took him. Reply. I took him. Yes, I'm fine. I took him. Uh -huh. If I go fine later, you know, be so. You know, consign me. <laughs> because when I started, when I got to, first time I go to China, you know, I did try to iron my trouser. Iron come bonum. Pant. I see that the part of hair. Part of the problem where we get here. I will forget. One man come Nigeria. Come they tell him. Hey, wow. Come they tell the son, we there for cinema. Come ask him, hey, why are you wearing the pants? And I say, that's not wrong with it. Now I mean, I turn. Ah, they know they mention pants anyhow for Nigeria. <laughs> Our ear know they hear pants. I say, why are you wearing this pant? And yes, that's not wrong with my top pants, man. Eh? Now I come they look. I don't see the boy pants. I said, ah, how the father come to see the pants when I don't see him? I'm tired. Now, I have been complaining, honestly. Oimbo people, we get the English, they are even confused. Because since I came, I was in London last year, and I started arguing. Because, maybe because we speak the Queen's English, as they say, English tend to support the women more. Yes, and I'm, I'm not happy about it because ordinarily, if you say, give her her book, it's correct in English. Give her her book. Then if give her her book is correct, then what is wrong with give him him book? <laughs> what is wrong? The law of corresponding pronoun should make everybody carry the one that fits directly. So that you have give her her book. Give him give me me book. Give you you give us give them give owner and give those people those people who honestly I have I have been so angry. In fact the other day I was arguing with a guy. I said, now, your English is confusing even you. He said, what do I mean? I said, okay. Now, when you see daddy, he is a man. Isn't he? He said, yes, he is. Okay. <laughs> she is a lady. Isn't she? Yes, she is. It is a speaker. Isn't it? Yes, it is. I said, okay, why is it that when he gets to my own, it is poor? He said, what do you mean? I said, okay, answer. I am a man. I'm not I. He said, yes, you am. <laughs> we leave it like that. All right, I know my people are here. Um, all the Yoruba people in the house, I greet. Yoruba people, no for my hand, yes. I love them. I'm a Yoruba. I just live in Port you know, It's always easy to know a Yoruba man, especially when they're on phone. Yeah, we hardly close mouth. Hello? Talon Soro? Ah, she had to never be. If I love her. Ah, Emma Sadebo. I'll do it in Bessa. All right, sir. Okay, sir. <laughs> the mouth must open. Even the one that, no matter your tribe, no matter your tongue, when you say it, your mouth must close. 
No, if you say, I have come, or I don't come, no matter your tribe, your mouth must close. But Yoruba man, I have come. Who? There was he open it. <laughs> and sincerely, when you talk about respect, yes, we are number one for respect. Honestly, in fact, it got to the height of it. I was on a queue to withdraw to get money, withdraw money from ATM, and there's this Yoruba girl in front of me, and she just went, typed, ping pong, ping pong, stayed. As soon as the money came out, she just knelt down. A shape. <laughs> we are known for respect. Igwe Kwenu. Igwe Kwenu. Yes. I respect them. Anything that has to do with money, we don't joke with it. In fact, one of the days I was passing through a spare parts shop, one of my friends, Obina, early morning, he made an early morning sale and he was counting the money. 21, 22, 23. I just said, Obina, how are you doing? My brother, 23, 24, 25, 26. Our family, not then 30. 31. <laughs> you cannot distract him. When I left him and I got to where I was going to, I wanted to buy something for the car, hydraulic. And when I got there, I said, who is in this shop? I didn't see anybody. A young man was by the side, urinating by the side. I said, who does this shop? Okay, I'm here. What do you want by? The guy, he held the piece. I said, halfway. I said, I want hydraulic. He said, big one or small one? I said, small one. Okay, the big one there. Big one, how much? Okay, now, now 250. You you cannot. Ah. No, he's everywhere. He's everywhere. Even Ausa people. The other day, I, you know, here you people enjoy. Anytime a car is coming, no matter the speed, once you just step on the zebra crossing, the car will just slow down and you just pass gently. When I came, I went with my brother. As I stepped, people stopped for me. Car stop. I said, yeah. So I went, car started going. I came back again. They stopped. I said, okay. So I'll go. Two cars will pass. I'll come back. <laughs> One guy came to Nigeria and tried it. One Awusa trailer. I was carrying Nama. Was coming. Po! American girl. She came and she saw the zebra crossing. The guy was coming. Po! The guy just called. At least he has seen me. The guy got the poo! As you up, the guy just jump. Ah! What is wrong with you? Didn't you see the zebra crossing? I don't say, come up for there. I did crash for head. Now you be zebra. <laughs> zebra crossing, zebra crossing. I will kill you there for there. <laughs> and you know, here, yeah, the way police arrest you is very easy. In fact, it's romantic. <laughs> Honestly. It's as, if, it's as if when a girl is pursuing a guy or like a guy is trying to toast a lady. Maybe you just went beyond the speed limit. They just come behind you. You see the light? You just park by yourself. Okay, darling. <laughs> I'm here. The guy will just come and park behind you and come and meet you. Hello. Before you know, ticket. Bam. Niger. No. We must check all your papers. I saw one Ausa man quarreling with a police officer holding the officer's shirt. I said, ah, what is the problem? I went and met him. I said, what is the problem? No talk to me. This man will lie at the crest for head. I said, ah, you are talking to an officer. Look, let me explain for him what happened to you. I said, what be that? That is, he try to tell me what happened to Ramo. When I was a man say, I the crest? No, say, now you in the talk to. <laughs> so he can say, okay, Oga, listen for me. I they come, this Gongoro, I did drive one. This is my truck. I did drive one for Kano. When I, I reach one for, for Kaduna, they check on for my paper. My paper is complete. <laughs> I drive one. I reach one for Lokoja. My paper is complete. <laughs> I drive one. I reach one for Enugu. They check on for my paper. My paper is complete. I reach one for Aba. They drive one. Check on for my paper. My paper is complete. 
Now me, I reach out for a post. Court, this officer, I they tell me, say my paper, I no complete. Now you hold the officer for shit. But like today, you go complete them for me, my paper. <laughs> <laughs> now the officer, they beg up. Aboki, they go, they go. <laughs> and you know, it's so interesting. These days, I, I, I went to my uncle's house recently. I just noticed that as we sat in the city room talking, anytime the wife comes out, my uncle will stand up and do like this. <laughs> Till the wife will pass, that they will come and recite to the woman. They call her Miss. One big woman will call her Miss. <laughs> now the Miss go qualify you Either you are coming in or not. So you have to come and recite. So all the parents, all the mothers have taught their children, you know, one poem or the other. So on the day of uh, registration, we're all there. Our mothers held us. So once the woman said, next, your mother will leave you. Then you go and read or recite the poem. So we're on the line. They just said, next. The little girl just went. Good morning, auntie. My name is Ogerukewe. The title of my poem is Old Roger. Old Roger is there. I got to his grave. Mm. Ah, that is great. They planted an apple tree over his head. Mm, ah, over his head. The apple, blah, 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 blah. Thank you. Enter not the one. Ah, just like that. Next one. Good morning, auntie. My name is Ogene Rukewe. The title of my poem is Baba Blashi, Baba Blashi. Have you any who? Yes, I have the best of three people. One for the best of one for the day. And one for the day together. Thank you. Enter not the one. Ah. Good morning, auntie. My name is Boke. The title of my poem is Rede, go away. Rede, go away. Come again another day. Little Tommy Wato. Enter not the one. Bam. Meanwhile, I was next. <laughs> All the time they were reciting the poem, me, I was looking at the building. Okay, now here we go day from Monday, I think. <laughs> I didn't know that it was my turn. The woman just said, Master, come here! Everything I have crammed. <laughs> just delete. <laughs> Good morning, auntie. My name is Tatafo. The title of my poem is Good morning, auntie. My name is Tatafo. The title of my poem is Good morning, auntie. My name is Tatafo. The title of my poem is Good morning, auntie. <laughs> The woman just screamed, hey, madam, carry your bikini, carry your bikini. I was 13 years when I started Nozri One. <laughs> All right, uh, before I go, my time, we still have uh, some wonderful uh, comedians in the house. Um, let me announce it myself. They might not say it. My DVD is out there. It's tagged, uh, titled Gospel According to Comedy. The first edition, this is a second edition of season two, as it's is, as is raining now. Season one has rained, but most of these jokes are in season one, so I'm trying not to repeat this season two so that you can enjoy it at home. Just $10 is out there. But let me just leave with this. See, for those of us, I know we have a lot of Christians also in the house, please let pastors and Sunday school teachers be very explicit when they are explaining things, especially to children. I got to the house two Sundays before I came to Nigeria. I was in my friend's uh, house with a son, seven-year-old boy. I just noticed that the boy would walk in the sitting room and would do, yay, yay. I was like, what is wrong with this boy? The mother noticed and like, Junior, what is it? I said, Mommy, nothing, nothing. The boy would go again and say, yay. Junior, what is it now? No, mommy, don't worry. Don't worry. I, I, I will beat you. No, mommy, don't worry. I wanted to win, but I don't want to win now. You don't want to win now. Why? Ah, no, mommy, not now. I want God to finish. God. What has God got to do with your win? After I enter that toilet and go and win. No, mommy. I don't want to win now. The mother now went inside, brought Cain. After I enter that toilet. Ah! No, mommy, I don't want to win now. 
Is it not Auntie Chinyere that told us in Children's Church that if you want God to fight for you, you have to hold your peace? <laughs> Thank you very much. My name is Kupeta Dafo. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for more comedy? I can hear you. Please rise up on your feet as I introduce to you one of the best comedians in the whole wide world. The most welcome comedian of the year. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, Shady! receiving me tonight I really feel loved like my brother Polycap said earlier on just like a similar story when I came to America it was a different experience entirely he came he had money I came no money he came he slept hotel. I came. Oh, what a pity. And then when he hook him, he pick for he call Pastor. Me no call no one. Because I didn't have credit. Now when I get for he call. They pick him. I call voicemail. <laughs> but today is a different story. <laughs> I don't want to cry. I mean at that time my head the person there was asking me now only you waka come then I respond chai come on make some crazy noise in the house You guys are great, man. Thanks for that intro. I, that, that thing is playing in my head. I'm going to create something soon. But I just like to have a great time with my people. First of all, I'd like to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. It takes a great heart like you all have to put your hand in your pocket and bring up money to go for a show and support a great guy like PC. Thank you. Thank you. It goes a long way. Because, I mean, what you will expect is maybe uh, Steve Harvey is coming by to get, or this big name is coming by to get. You saw him in his small name. <laughs> you people are wonderful. Please, a round of applause for yourself. Thank you. Thank you. That aside, to our friends who are not from Nigeria, You've been seated here for a bit. I excuse the Africans because most of you at least have an understanding of our language, which is Pidgin English. So to our Americans who are here, who do not understand, 
please be here with us. But we are not sorry. <laughs> we are proud of the language and talk God has given us. The Jamaicans don't apologize for that part to us. The Spanish don't, uh, don't uh, you know, apologize for their mimusa pocata <laughs> and things. We, at least we try. We even have the English. We just structured it. That's why it's called Pidgin English. So, when you're asking, oh, did you come alone? What we will say is, now only you waka come. <laughs> when you ask people, how are you? We say, are you there? And you, you respond. I did. <laughs> Abi? Yes. Are my American friends here? Anybody? Anybody? Oh, sir, it's obvious. You know I mean? How you doing? You okay? When I say, how you day? Just respond and say, I did. You good? All right, let's try. How you day? <laughs> now, Niger, <laughs> man, you deserve a passport. You don't need interview, we just give you straight. In fact, uh, do you still have DVD? Give him, you will need it. You will need it, but thank you very much for being a part of this. It, it goes a long way. Let's appreciate him in the house. Yes. But may I, if you will permit me, have the privilege to speak about my country, Nigeria. You see, a country is not the ge you know, geographical design or the way you see it, it's the people. That bring the country. You see, the same way Americans are proud to be an American, even though we live here, we are still proud to be a Nigerian. We are only using wisdom. <laughs> the Bible says wisdom is profitable to direct. So it's not that we don't like where we are coming from. We do. In fact, it is actually the place that gave us values that make us stand today. That is why a polycap can just call anybody out of Google. Saw someone's name, call the person, and the person open up the heart to still go pick him up and his wife, bring them home, and fire them with fish soup. <laughs> and after that, they stayed there. An average American may not do that. They ain't gonna do that. Is that what I'm saying? No. But we, it's our culture. There are people you can call in Nigeria, uncle, I'm broke. Okay, send me your account number. Pew! Something like that. Yes. It's a value of a Nigerian. Yes. It's just that it doesn't really happen here amongst Nigerians. <laughs> oh! Prove to me. Remember when Polycarp said, I came here with 3,000. He was bold. Someone behind me said, uh, you got money. <laughs> I mean, with the way we walk, prove to me, anybody here, that you can call anybody in America and they will fire you money. <laughs> Sir, you? Yes. See? Yes. You will call someone? Yes. You need help? Yes. And the person will send you money? Yes. Really? Yes. Oh, Lord, Father Lord, you are a worthy God. <laughs> I need help. <laughs> Please introduce me. Forget. I swallow my pride. <laughs> oh God, help me. <laughs> I have bills. It's too much. Oh God, uh, uh, please don't. Usher, don't allow him go. <laughs> if I'm coming to see that lady, let me finish ministry. Hallelujah. <laughs> you, know, you don't have to be too expensive to help me. I mean, just from your heart, the way you call 5,000, don't write it. <laughs> please let's give him a round of applause. He's my helper. <laughs> inform you, being a Nigerian, naturally we're spiritual because of the kind of background we're coming from. <laughs> True or false? True. Very spiritual. Oh, no, I'm looking for the country that can do night vigil as much as we do. <laughs> Every blessed Friday of the year, there is a vigil. Especially back home. And you know here, there are, you know, laws organized, all the churches, the auditoriums, soundproof. You won't even hear what's going on outside. You understand? Everything is too shrewd. <laughs> Where we come from, you hear? So even if you're not there physically at the church, you are there spiritually in your house. 
because from the praise worship to the church prayer offering prayer prayer music prayer, everything you are part of the VG because you can't sleep and possibly about five churches alone on your streets so we are very spiritual the scripture that appeals to us says we are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation a peculiar people we are so peculiar I told you about being spiritual let me give you an example it's only Nigerians that react immediately to the words that come out from people's mouth for example you walk into a bank an average Nigerian that is fresh is standing on the line which we call Q so he's right there at the end of the line but you just come in innocently and you ask, excuse me, are you the last person? This response, you will be the last. <laughs> all your family and generations, all of them will be the last. They will so curse you out and at the end, in the name of Jesus. We are very spiritual. That is one thing I love about. And every situation that come across our way, we convert it spiritually. For example, again, when the time of World Cup was going on, we enjoyed the game. I mean, we remember when our boys were playing. We know, naturally, no matter how they do, play, 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 they won't cross first round. We already know. We only enjoy the process. Opportunity to abuse, we abuse. Opportunity to pray, we pray. Opportunity to shout, we shout. But we know. First round, hmm, they are coming home. But, uh, uh, but this walk up was different. The first game wasn't good. We know. But the second game was exceptional. I mean, I, I was so happy that I asked so my Nigerians can play like this. Then at the third game, before the first round cut off, they played a game that was outstanding. That thing, I think we played against Argentina. Yes. I was impressed. That to every Messi, we had a Musa. <laughs> to every Rojo, we had a Yobo. So, I mean, did you see the goals that Musa scored? Excellent. On point. From Angu. Pa! Go! Oh, no. Too much. But does the, the third, the game that exited us. <laughs> you know, there was a part of the game that a defender was trying to, trying to, no, yeah, we were trying to score, then the opponent's defender held our guy from the back and turned him down. That was when I wish that Suarez was playing for us. <laughs> because if it was a Nigerian Suarez, that guy would hear it too. Yeah. Our, we Nigerians, we take it to the extra level. Suarez on his, ah, I mean, no. <laughs> you hold him down, why the hell, he was like, ah, and he's about to run. Wow. I... <laughs> then instead of it to do it stylishly so that the referee will see it, hey, how are you back? Ah, ah, <laughs> ah. They say stop. Ah. Ah. <laughs> I'm telling you, we are too exceptional and peculiar. It's a spiritual thing. In fact, that was when they started praying prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus. Hell, every Suarez in my life that wants to bite away my destiny, Lord, cancel in the name of Jesus. Very spiritual. In fact, recently, another one was the epidemic outbreak of Ebola. That Ebola transformed us, but it's as if we were prepared for it. Now Nigerians don't just greet any They don't shake any hand. They will so show you the love without a body contact. How are you? Uh -uh. And go. You know, normally your guy that you like, hey, what's up? Hey, doom. it has changed. From afar, you use Bluetooth. <laughs> it has changed. 
I got a broadcast recently of the story of a woman who came to the altar to give testimony. Say, Father, we thank you. Praise the Lord. I was diagnosed with Ebola. I thought my life had finished. But the Lord came and intervened. And he changed and healed me. The church shouted, Pray! Oh, everyone is cut <laughs> So she was about to give the mic to the pastor. <laughs> the pastor said, No, give the next person. <laughs> she was about to give the next person. I said, mm, give it back to the pastor. <laughs> then we came again with prayer. Father, every Ebola. May you not have power near me once I touch it. Jesus' name. Everything around us, we are very, very extra dramatic and prayerful. You remember the time when GSM first came out? You remember? Thank you. You know, there was a time they now said there was killer number. Where we come from, especially our mothers, they are very spiritual and prayerful. Now, there was a number that called a woman. Immediately she saw the number. <laughs> she just dropped the phone. <laughs> you can never kill me. You can never ever kill me. Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, this number calling me, this killer number, you will not get me in Jesus' name. She prayed. And the next I heard is, hey John, come and pick the phone. Very spiritual. A lot of things that have happened is being converted to our favor. And we are just extra dramatic. You see, when I quoted that scripture that says we are peculiar people, forget it. How can I describe it again? It's only, there's a particular part of Nigeria. They call them the Niger Delta. They are full of action. Area. Area. Tata folk can testify. They are the ones that will communicate with you physically. They are the only ones that will give you the action before the warning. I will slap you. <laughs> After the slap has gone. It was when I got here that I discovered how Nigerians are, you know, responding to things, reacting to... It's not the way... Ah, it's totally different from home. What? You're trying to cross a road here, you get on the zebra crossing, and you will boldly walk. And cars will stop. Oh, God. You didn't even make any move, any order. But the car is coming, sees your foot on the zebra crossing, it stops. Oh, that's heaven. <laughs> because that is when we, crazy people from Nigeria, do the best of time. So as we get on it, a car stops. <laughs> we'll come back again. We will end it, we'll come back again. <laughs> we will play on it. Because back home, it's not like that. <laughs> you want to cross road in Nigeria? Is that's when you will know how to play ten ten? <laughs> oh, God bless my country. Oh, I love it. You want to just cross like that? They will, and they don't abuse you in English. They will give you the local content. Because it's very rich. <laughs> when the abuse is in the local language. So that you can feel it from deep within. I'm telling you. So when you're trying to cross, play tete, so what conductor? Ha, ha, shorty kuri. Very dramatic. You get here, you are driving, GPS is there for you to walk. At the next hundred meters, make a ride. <laughs> when you make a ride, just go 1.5 miles and make a left on Bissonnet Street. <laughs> Even the names of the streets, they are too sweet. Bissonnet, Lakewood. Uh, 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 walk away, Beach Nut, Sugarland. Oh, mommy, 
It's so sweet the way you just said it. Oh, Sugarland, Honeycomb Avenue, Richmond Drive, Bryan Parkway, West Timer, West Chase, South Gus North. It's sweet. Come home. The areas alone, they are good enough to kill you than the number of the street. Paco, Onibongo, Cement, Cemetery, Alagadu, Alako Meji, Alakuko. The GPS in Nigeria, you know, this is one of the materials I love talking about. I love to be real when I talk about my place. It's because it's just interesting. The positive side make it interesting. The negative side make it interesting. Imagine now, when you have the GPS working in Nigeria, it's totally different. Yeah? When you type in address here, it's sweet. 1151 West Eastern Parkway, South. This one, black. Pew, bringing the route. Oh, sweet. Oh. It may work. Yes. It's technology. But my problem is, once the GPS is working, will it work for the local buses? Because those ones, they, they're not here the English. Show. So if I told anything, you will break it down to the pigeon English so that they can understand. Very innovative. Abby? So you will hear this. 17, up Baby Road, Ikeja. Beep. Now you go walk out forward. When you reach that front, may it turn right. As you're about to reach that point, you say, wait! <laughs> no turn for there. What are the road? Move forward. <laughs> As you're moving forward, I'm telling you, slow down, slow down. Police the road. <laughs> then when you not get past the police, you say, eh, hey. they walk out 100 yards, 100 yards. You not tell you, turn left at that junction. Now you're about to make a left. You say, wait! Move forward, road no good. <laughs> then you start moving forward. At a point, the GPS will just go silent. <laughs> you will now, and maybe God help you. You're in a place like Mushi. <laughs> you just start driving. Ah, ah, GPS is not working. And that psychological approach. Once a machine or equipment is not working, we don't. <laughs> it's our normal direction. So I ah, you are tapping things. It's not working. The GPS is quiet. Now, when you reach a place that you don't even know left or right, it will not come on. At this point, you are on your own. This guy right here on the bass guitar, Rollins, is a wonderful, talented producer. I've worked with him. Please, let's celebrate him in the house. This is my guy. I have a friend of mine who came in from London. We used to hustle things those days. He's a multi-instrumentalist. I was on the drums in church. He was either on the keyboard or on the bass guitar. But now, a structural engineer, married, doing okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please let me appreciate my friend Wisdom. She'll stand up, my friend. You'll stand up, yeah. You know what, yeah, it's not a show, yeah. <laughs> you know what, it is, yeah. London people. <laughs> That's another thing about us. We travel two weeks. We come back with asset. <laughs> You've not noticed? Just like what MCPC was saying. What's up? Your man. Huh. You'll be shocked. A friend of yours that you call Wale traveled for two weeks just to Ghana. The man he arrives. Hey, what happened? No, me. What legs are you? Just change them. Then another final area, let me chat with you. The way you train your kids. It's good. When I got in here, I, I now learned or understood what it means to relate with children. It's a good thing, but you guys take it too far. Your own child in the house you bought. You pay mortgage or you pay rent. 
will be telling you, Dad, leave me. This is my space. Eh? <laughs> Your space. Oh! Oh! Lord, you are here. Your space. Ah, you will define it. Were you there when they bought the land? Were you there when they cut the grass, the bush, laid the foundation? Now your space. Oh! Sometimes I wish I'm an American child. But it's just that where I come from, I'm happy I'm a Nigerian child. MCPC said it before. He's so used to the fact that he stayed with people, he can't get to the pot. So even his own wife will cook food. He's afraid to touch the meat. It's psychological disturbance. It's in our blood. Even at 28, no age, at 28, you can't just do any out to your pay. True of us. And I appreciate the culture. Because we follow the scripture well. He says, spare the rod, spoil the child. Uh, uh, multimedia, can you put up a scripture? Is it possible? Multimedia? Not possible. Ah! When you get home, read 2 Samuel 7.14. If I'm correct. Yeah. 2 Samuel 7.14. I wish I had my... I would have shown you. Have this scripture. If anybody can open it quickly, I'll read it to you. Thank you. Watch. Listen. I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity... I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. So it's scriptural if I beat you. It's scriptural. It's okay. Do they, they want to call the cops? Then the police will enter my house. Want to take my child away. You are lucky. You want this laws that America is working for you. <laughs> How? How else can I start? How else can I describe? I watch movies and I'm angry with the way, though they are actors, but they are sending a message. With the way children relate with their parents. Speak to them. Dad, stop it. You're acting stupid. Huh? In my language, but bad. No stupid. You are done for. When we were growing up, if you ask the beautiful women or ladies who are here, coming in from the door, and maybe your aunt, not even your mom or your grandma, your aunt is in the living room. It's from the door. You will need her and greet her and walk towards her. How are you, auntie? I said, ma. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, your walk was very. Yes, ma. I hope you are okay, ma. How is everything, ma? Then you now start. Two of us. Then you now, you now. You know, there was a perfect example of when, oh God, thank you. When you were young, and maybe mommy was trying to take you to a place. She's taking you to Auntie Dupe's house. Before you leave the house, she will warn you. She said, Tunji, Tunji, Tunji. Now, what do you say? How many times did I? God bless you. You respond three times. Say, good. You're not telling if it is me that get back to you. <laughs> In our local language, Toba Jamie will be here. When we get to Auntie Dupe's house and they ask you what to eat, you eat. If I will deal with you, if I will kill you, true or false? Thank you. Now you get to Auntie Dupe's house. Auntie Dupe being so nice, beautiful. She sees you. Tunji, how are you? How are you doing? You're looking good. How is school? What was your result? Auntie, I came first. Beautiful! I'm proud of you. That's good. Nice. Are you taking care of mommy? Mm -mm. Because mommy is seated next to you. You are well behaved. You don't just do any harm. It is the children here. They get there. Oh, it's telling. Ah. They just go, pick the remote control, change the channel. What? growing up, you dare not. You cannot. You better not. Go to the living, you know, then we call it parlor. Living room. 
especially when your parents have a guest. It was only those who were really stubborn that could go bold. Pack up people like us. Because I'm fat, we, we, they beat me. Oh, they beat, I'm serious. They beat serious. Hey, mama, ba. Shit, I like it. Oh. Father Lord, I don't know how I can prove it. They beat me. Stubborn children like us is the one that will play to the living room. Mm -hmm. You know me asking your aunt, Auntie, mm, is that malt? <laughs> then, oh, at that point, you are seated with your mom. You are quiet. But until do what I said before, being so nice, we'll come. I will tell you. So, Tunji, what will you eat? I have jello fries. I have chicken. I just prepared good stew. Are you ready for it? We, that we know where we are coming from. And the warning you've taken from home. Psychologic. See, we were trained the computer wise in our brain. We work better than computer. So psychologically, immediately, you cannot just answer. There's only one thing you will do. Mm. <laughs> you will look at mommy. Abby? The same mother. Oh, Father Lord, we had parents. The same mother that warned you from the house, that cautioned you from your home, and told you not to touch it, is the same mother that will see you Look at you and tell you, do G eat now? <laughs> then, we couldn't say anything. But now we are grown. I'm happy to inform you, our parents. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for the training. Thank you for the upbringing. But if we have our way, we can also tell you, you were wicked. Thank you all very much. Good night. God bless. Sure.
gentlemen, all the way from California. Are you ready for this? I present to you the number one man when it comes to comedy in this country. I personally respect him. Please, please make some noise. I can't hear you now. Make some noise. Make some noise. Make some noise for my big friend, my big brother, four over four. He's been on this stage doing what he loves to do. Please welcome Shani Brown. Well, it's a pleasure to be here again, and uh, we want to thank you for supporting us. And, you know, I'm just going to go to the eastern part of the country because for sure of this magnitude, it is only the Igbo people that stay enough to enjoy their money. <laughs> when everybody is facing, nah, pay VIP, nah, I'm not going to go here. Let that boy come here. I see him on the poster. I'm not living until I see him perform. That is Igbo people. They don't waste their money. But you know, uh, like everybody's been saying, Nigeria is a good country, you know. Uh, I mean, there's so many good things to say about our country. Uh, most populous black nation, you know, sixth largest exporter of oil, second most corrupt. You know. <laughs> we, are, we are just, there's, there's nowhere in the news, mo, uh, you know, we have even, they even said we are the most religious country in the world. And the one that, you know, makes me very happy is the one that they said were the most educated ethnic group in America. I think we deserve a loud of applause. <laughs> and, you know, for those of you who are busy, if you've not seen me in a while, it's because I wanted to be part of that statistics. When I read that, that Nigerians are the most e educated ethnic group in America, I realized that oh, all my education was in Nigeria. So I decided to have my own education here. So I went to the prestigious... Harvard University. Thank you. I went there to visit and I came back the next day. Uh, just to, uh, whether you like it or not, I've been there. If they ask me, uh, did you go to Harvard? I say, I went to Harvard. They see the same thing. You know, going there is going there. So, you know, I wanted to be part of that statistics. And, you know, I mean, Coming from that, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Only us, you know, can survive in, you know, so many ways and so many things. I mean, there are some things that, you know, when you hear about people in this part of the world, you're surprised. Look at Robin Williams. Do you know how much that guy is worth? And he killed himself. Only in America. <laughs> a thousand years in Nigeria. You go to his house, we go, he will beg you. We love our life too much. In fact, some of us love our life so much that even at the point of death, they will still be negotiating. How many of you know my brothers from the East? Ibo Puenu! Puenu! Where's Puenu? When I said the Ibo people are the one remaining, you think I was joking. It is only the Ibo man that will come to us and say, Hey! Your money or your life? He will negotiate and I take it easy. You see my life, I have given it to Jesus. You see that money, let us share it 50-50. Because if you take anything, I will have. We just love our life too much. The only people that I know that love their life more than anybody are my people, Yoruba people. Oh, we don't joke with our life. If you want to know us here, let electric cut or let there be banger or knock away. This place will be empty. Yoruba men will run, leave their wife and children. It is when they're in the same place, you know, you're Kemi, you better start coming outside, though. That empty PC show, we were going for comedy, they want to kill us. Do but why? If the wife say, "Honey, come back, come back," where? If it's Lori, marry them, yo. We don't joke with our lives, but trust an Igbo man. If you like, pa pa. Now wait me that. <laughs> Igbo people are the bravest. You know, they, they they are just one of the bravest people. But you know, since you know everybody has been you know talking about you know their mom and everybody, you know, I mean, it is it is interesting. I um. I lost my mom last December, you know, and I went for the burial in January. Um, some of my friends were there, uh, Shagun, gave, Shagun came. Uh, not that he flew, but he had something to do, so he just used that opportunity. <laughs> so when I say he came, now you think he flew because of my mother, I know. <laughs> but he was there all the same. And you know, I just, I just remember, you know, what some of the commentators were saying. See, let me tell you, African mothers are just peculiar. That is the word. Because you see, Contrary to the Western mom, I keep telling everybody that if you make a request of an African mom, she will, she will reply you the way the Western mom will reply you, but your own reaction 
will be different based on your experience with her. Let me give you an example. American child. Hey, your mom, I want to go outside and play football. Mom said, oh, you want to go outside and play football? You can go. Mom will just carry the ball and go. It's straightforward. But for the African mom, I keep telling people, if the African mother has the time to repeat your request, it's a sign of danger. <laughs> so you tell your African mom, Mama, I want to go outside, go play football. They have their pick line. Eh? <laughs> you want to go outside and play football. Oh, yeah, go now. <laughs> Something will just tell you, Mama, don't worry, I'll go and do my own work. Eh? <laughs> so you know before. The reaction is different. And, you know, I also tell people that, okay, for, for instance, I'm married to an American, African man, born and raised, married to an African-American. So, before I came to America, she came over to Nigeria to see me in my full glory. My father died 14 years ago, and as a first son, I had privileges. My mother would cook, bring it in big bowl, wash and basin. She would see me. I would wash my hand. I would eat. Before I finish it, my mother would say, are you done? I would say, no. She will, she will go back. When I finish the food, she will come, pour the house, carry the bowl, carry everything. Give me toothpick. I know that she was looking at me and nodding her head. I'm making notes down. I'm like, this girl is learning. I did not know she was plotting. <laughs> Immediately, we landed in America. She gave me the one in my life, bubble. I said, yeah, honey. He said, there's no honey in this. You see that? Coming to America life you were living, this is America, Jack. You have to take your kunta, kunta behind in the kitchen and wash the dishes. I said, is it me this one is talking to? I said, look here, look at me. I will do no such thing. I'm an African man and we don't do that. Well, some of the men here can bear me witness that we all said that. <laughs> when your wife told you the same thing. And today, to the glory of God, we know that's not exactly what we are doing. Sir, in your full glory, even as you are hungry, you know why you get up, you will huff that shirt and wash plates. <laughs> to the glory of the Lord. And you'll be singing praises. But you see, the Bible says there's a time for everything. I endured because the pastor advised me. Do you have your papers yet? I said, no. You see the one filing for you? I said, yes. I said, ah! You will wash. Oh. <laughs> My brother, you will wash. So I took from that wish. I said, okay, that is the reason why. She had her way. The day they gave me my blue passport, the rule in that house changed. She said, honey, will you help me with the dishes? <laughs> Repeat that statement. <laughs> in this house now, we are equal. Equality before the law. And mind you, I am the husband in this house. The rules have changed. It's either you want me in this house or I am out. <laughs> now, I could not make that threat last year. I said, so you gonna wash the dishes or not? Because if you don't, I'm out of this house. She was like, oh, you wanna go? I said, yeah, I wanna go. She now remember that. Ah, this guy has his passport too. <laughs> say, honey, so what do you want me to do? I said, ah! <laughs> because let me tell you, as an African man, right? We are very free. Your wife can bring you food that you don't like. She will serve you. She will even kneel down. You will call her back. Hey, what is this? It's too salty. Get it out! Ah, she'll come, honey, don't worry. Ah, she'll go out. Make another fresh one. I that America. <laughs> say, the day I tried it, I said, honey, what is this? You know, she was trying to make African food. I said, what is this? This is too salty. Take it away. She's like, oh, yeah? Kunte? That is my nickname. Because even when I arrived, our, our father was trying to call my name. He said, oh, so what's your name? I said, Olushe. Uh, oh, uh, what? I said, Olushe. You know, I'm going to just call you Kunte. I said, your father. So I told her, take this, take it out. She was like, oh yeah, you better take your behind and go in the kitchen. I went to get groceries, I cook this food, I played in front of you, you could even say thank you. That is the day that I know that in America, between the time she went to buy the groceries and the time she served you, you have to say thank you seven times. <laughs> thank you for going to buy the groceries. When she said, thank you for being there. When she arrives, thank you for coming back. While she's cooking, thank you for cooking. When it smells, mm, it smells good, thank you. When she serves you, thank you. When you finish it, thank you, honey. For what? <laughs> Everything in this country, you just have to thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Some of the things we were taking for granted. But I learned my lesson the hard way. I learned it. And uh, you know, the beauty of marrying those people is that their kind of romance is cheap. You don't need to buy too much. Write poems. Buy flowers. In fact, I don't need to buy the flowers sometimes. Do you know that if I go to pluck it, it's even more gallant. If I tell her that, honey, you know I didn't buy this flower, she said, what? I plucked it myself, but oh my God, that's so gallant. No way to the Nigerian girl, poverty go kill you. The idea of romance is different. I just, that is the thing I love about them. But you can't try with a Nigerian woman. Nigerian women, you pluck flowers, man. <sighs> In the first place, you will tell us who sent you. <laughs> if he has no brand names, Gucci, Prada, Maga, all those kind of names, it's not accepted. Because you see, here, everything about this part of the world, cool, soft, gentle, when the police arrest you, on, apart from the ones we are seeing on TV these days, you'll be happy. This is a place that the police will come before you and will address you in a way that you like. And when they arrest you, you will thank the police officer, thank you for arresting me. I appreciate you. When they arrest you. But where we come from, you're already a suspect. Even before you are proven guilty beyond every reasonable doubt. That is the beauty of this part of the world. But what I love and what I keep telling people is that what I appreciate about this movie is how organized they are. Everything in this part of the world, organized. From the moment you enter to the left, citizen. To the right, alien. <laughs> you walk through the line, they attend to you, citizens will go, <laughs> free of charge. Alien, we question your life. If God now catch you, you have that green passport. Ah, extra drilling. But you see, that has its own thing. You now get out. You get to the street. In fact, you see, rental car, buses, taxis, everything organized. You get on the street. Buses are packed horizontally, diagonally, vertically. Organized. You get on the street. Street light. Organized. The road. Organized. To the right. To the left. Even the grasses. Organized grass. You now get into the city. You see everything. The one that blew my mind is where they bury their dead. It is so neat, you start thinking of dying. <laughs> you will appreciate death. And that is why in this part of the world, you see people. Every year they do, they even have Remembrance Day, where they go to talk to dead people. <laughs> James, it's been 10 years, we miss you. The dog miss you too. Woo, woo. <laughs> Come to Nigeria. Where we bury our dead, said you cannot pass there at night. Because dead people are angry. The heat is making them come to the road to find themselves. Now, oh boy, this place is crazy. In fact, it's the other way around. We don't go to visit the dead. They come to visit us. Ah, ah! Person don't die five years and I don't think he Everything that happens in our part of the court is the other way around. Even the idea of romance, I've been telling people, the idea of romance, here, boy meets girl. I keep telling people, do you know that when you see a lady of your heart desire, a song comes to your heart. Let's start from our colonial masters. When you see a British man, you know, British, they're always very formal. Bowler hat, three-piece suit, walking stick. It will come with a flower. When he sees you, Sing a song. Take my hand. Take my whole life too. Cause I can help fall in love with Look at how everybody's almost sleeping. <laughs> Even you two, you'll be like, oh my God, it's so romantic. <laughs> now, the Americans, like you said, they are the most informal people in the world. The Americans don't even need to dress right. 
T-shirt, oversized shirt, baggy jeans, Nike Air. And when he's coming, you don't know if he's going to the right or to the left. Just see him come like that. Yo, 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 and Americans can lie. They just come. Baby, I will never find another lover sweeter than you, sweeter than you. Cause you are close to me, you like my mom. Close to me, you like my father. Close to me, you like my sister. Close to me. Bessie, you just meet now. He's closer than your entire family. And you two, you believe. Oh my God. My God. There's always a song. And when you come to my country too, you know we have three major tribes, right? Let's start from the north. Aosa people. When the Aosa man sees you, you will know by his dressing. He will wear his Agbada or his Buba and Shokoto. White. Cap. And you have a touch light. You see your face. You just say, Nami do Mariam. I suppose to Mariam. If Mama don't like me. If Papa don't like me. If they don't like you, what are you doing there? Now, let's go to my brothers from the east. You go, Gwenu! Gwenu! Where's Gwenu? Everything about the Igbo is false. I think it is you people that God was saying when he said in the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven survived so Bali and Bali take it by. Because even your name, if you call 10 Igbo names, you can lose 5 pounds. You have to prove what? Mwakege! Chukudi! Ngozi! Call ten of those names, you have lost five pounds every morning. Even if you want to say, "Come on, hello, hi," you want to hey, what do hey, what do now fight? Can you just say, "Hi, how are you?" Where do, where's Hey, hey. You want to greet each other? It's like you want to do something. You want to hey, what do hey? Take it easy, yo. Two Igbo men were greeting themselves at the airport. They had to call you. Hey, they're about to fight. No, it's not fight, though. And when the Igbo man comes, you will know by his fashion sense. Because you see, the richer the Igbo man, the higher his trouser. <laughs> so when you see an Igbo billionaire, the trouser is so high that he can take money from his back pocket over his shoulder. <laughs> so when the Igbo man comes, his trouser is like that. Now, nah, baby, can you give me the thing right away? Like I said, everything is like force. And you know their old song. Mvama, 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 Mvama. I want to marry you. Give me your love. Is it by force? No toasty, no day. No, just give me your love like that. Thank you. Before you come to church, you don't play I love for Ibo Party. Eh? Now, when you come to Yoruba people, Yoruba people always exaggerate everything. <laughs> and they are overexcited. Only a Yoruba man will see a lady that he likes, he will start abusing himself. You see me, ah, what about you do to me, Baje lady, ah! Are you the Baje? Ah, what are you fine? <laughs> Yoruba people, we abuse ourselves. I know the other thing about the Yoruba man is that we can what we cannot do in 10 years, we'll tell you we'll do in 10 days. That is why if you want to fight a Yoruba man, don't listen to what comes out of his mouth. He will psychologically defeat you. And do you know that when the Yoruba man is angry, he does not finish a sentence. Ah! What about? Ah! My, ah! If you know the technique, just don't say anything. Just be looking at him. Let him make a fool of himself. After all that noise, just tell him, are you ready? Oh yeah, let's fight. That's it. You see? We are lucky I don't fight on Monday, so. <laughs> Yoruba, we can make mouth. But I love the worthy people. Area! 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 The A is coming from that area, Abby. You see that everybody left you. Because of your anointing to touch and make it disappear. It is only worthy people that when they see a beautiful lady, instead of them to go straight, they will be asking somebody about the lady. You see a beautiful, say, ah, ah. See, as you fire like winch. <laughs> Are they come? Bros, 
You know to say me and this girl go fit ourselves. <laughs> they will not ask the person, they will be asking somebody else in front of the girl. Say you know to say we go fit ourselves. Abby? But when they don't judge you. <laughs> me and you will make compatible partner. How far now? Well, you you do much. Ah, ah, not today. When you get set up party. Let's give Nigeria a big round of applause. Come on. That is the beauty of the country we come from. Uh, two, three weeks ago, uh, my first daughter uh, started school. I guess it's a handful. And I've been thanking God that she's in school. But uh, the problem now came that all the English I've been speaking, you know, unconsciously I've been speaking Nigerian English to her without knowing. So one day she asked me, said, Daddy, why do you put O at the end of everything you say? And I said, do I put O? He said, yeah. He said, come O. I'll beat you O. I want to eat O. So she went to school and she was putting O. And the teacher said, why are you putting O? He said, because my daddy is African. Because anybody that she sees that has a face that is too strong, he said, are you African? She knows our features, that our features are very strong. Because if you see the passport I used to enter this country and my current passport, they are two totally different people. Uh, MCPC, you were talking about your pastor. Well, when I go into this country, uh, I went to perform somewhere because I was hungry to just make that money. And my pastor heard me perform and he said, ah, brother. Meanwhile, you know, a lot of churches have been telling me, ah, come to our church, come to our church. But I was trying to make up my mind. That is where you know that money is powerful. The pastor saw me, Papa was like, I am impressed. I want to tap into you. So I was like, how? He just wrote me a check, $100. I said, sir, where's your church? <laughs> Consider me a member. If this is how you deal with your people. Because all the churches I was going to, they were like, we're going to do prayer and fast. How many of you know that most of us, before we got here, we fasted? We prayed. We did vigil. Before we went to the embassy. Favor to follow us. So that when they see us, they just say, take it. I got my visa. This particular one that brought me here, I had been there three times. I became a customer. You know where they reject you so much that there's no space in your passport to reject again? You now say, come closer. You put the reject on your forehead. Boom! So that from outside they will know, hey, he has come again. They reject you. And let me tell you, the day I went for my interview, come and see practice. Start practice, start speaking like an American. What are you here for? Oh, yeah, I'm just going to States. <laughs> going to States? Yeah, I'm going to States. All right, all right, all right, yeah, all right, that's what's up, that's what's up. You, not only, yes, you know. No, me, I know like four. Yeah, that's what's up. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. So, when you go, oh, so why you want to come to America? Uh, just, just want to go south, saying. So, for real? Uh, yeah, that's what's up. Um, we have a problem with your account. Bros, Alpha, don't do that now. <laughs> My account is good now. I borrowed two money from everywhere to build this in the account. How many of you know that you don't know eh, how strong you are until you are in the face of danger? <laughs> oh, you don't? I will prove it to you. I was, how many of you remember there was a time that there was a recurring plane crash in Nigeria? It was happening almost on a weekly basis. That to now travel by air became a big issue. People were traveling by road, by sea, underground, everywhere. <laughs> because it was dangerous. So I was traveling from Abuja to Lagos. When they announced, ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seatbelt. We're about to experience a bad turbulence. I think this plane is going to crash land. If you're a Christian, call on Jesus. If you're a Muslim, call on Allah. If you don't believe in God, you're on your own. <laughs> Come on, see everybody shout to Father! People were shouting, you know that Nigerians, they can't pray. Father! Let this place land. Come as people promising God what God will not hear. Father, if you let it land, I will give you my Versace shirt. Ah, Father, my Gucci shoes. Let me land safely. On my right, I didn't know it was a pastor. It was just sigh. It was just shh. I just heard him blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. The mom of my left was saying, Lila, 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 Lila. I know I was a Christian, but at that moment, I didn't know who to trust. <laughs> So I just stopped in the two. I, hold, I held the imam's hand and I held the pastor's hand. When the plane entered the maddest of bless of my life, ah, he shook, he turned over two times. By the time he came back to normal, the pastor was shouting, blood of Jesus, heal and love, blood of Jesus. I said, eh? 
Even the man was standing like the blood of Jesus. I said, okay, at this point, anyone that can say me, save me. <laughs> when we landed, I asked pastor, I said, pastor, I think I heard something. I said, shut up there. <laughs> at that moment, whoever can say me is the one that will follow. <laughs> you don't know how strong your faith is or you are in the face of danger. <laughs> and, you know, when you say that people love their wives, if you are here, you love your wife, Give your wife a round of applause, especially if your wife is here. If your wife is beside you, you better be the one with the loudest clap. How many of you know that marriage is not a bed of roses? Oh, marriage is good, it's a good thing, you know, but it's not a bed. I keep telling, when people ask me, Are you married? I say, I'm happily married, but I don't know about my wife. <laughs> but me, oh, yes, I'm happily married. Because you see, the idea of marriage, you see, West, Western, Western marriage is totally different. You see, here, you see, couple. When they're in the mall, they hold each other's hands. They look in each other's eyes. And they say, sweet nuts, baby, you're just beautiful. You're just, you're just, it's, it's cool like that. See them hold each other and they go like that, yeah. Now, when you see an African man do the same thing at the mall, two things are involved. Is either that wife is new or is holding the wife's hand so that she'll not go and finish the credit card? That'd be, hey, hey honey, we have to get out today. You are not going anywhere. I leave your hand. You go and finish that credit card. Put me in there. No, let's go together. The same thing. When a man is taking his wife on a date in this part of the world, you see him go around the car to go and open the door. Honey. When a Niger man does that, two things are involved. So that the wife is new or the daughter of that car is bad. <laughs> so he's trying to protect his image. He said, honey, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Please come and help me. Let us open this thing together. Our idea of romance is different. And that is why in this part of the world, ladies enjoy a lot. Before a man asks you, before you will even agree, he will ask you, how are you doing? Oh, well, well, we'll go for a date. And from a date, you want to do dinner. And from dinner, you want to go see movies. That is a long process. When my father saw my mom, it was that day that he proposed. In fact, the way he called my mom, said, even me, I was embarrassed when my mother told me. He's been eyeing my mom for over a month. When he saw her, hey! <laughs> Come here. My mom said, who, me? Yes, come here. The approach, very, very bush. <laughs> and some of us still do it here. We just feel like that to you see a beautiful girl say, Come here. Now let me talk to you. And I love my able people because they are so full of confidence. You know, when that able man has money, you will know. The kind of confidence he talks with. Even with the bushes bushman because I keep telling everybody Igbo people are the only people that will be in America 40 years the accent will not change <laughs> they were asking some people who came to Nigeria last December say a oh, Nigerian who's been in diaspora who's been influenced by the culture that's how they met one Igbo man at the airport say so how long have you been in the US in the 40 years <laughs> so you have been influenced by the culture say yes oh is it okay so how has the American culture influenced you? You say, nah, nah, I listen to their rap music. They say, which one is your best? They say, Snoop Doggy Doggy. <laughs> Dr. Andre. <laughs> Boys 11 men. They say, we can see that. That's my brother from the East. Uh, they, 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 they are very special people. And, and, you know, to, to buttress some of my point. Excuse me? It's not just people, people who. I've been here six years. And I've tried my best to, you know, help my, even though my wife is American, I was thinking that probably after six months, my accent is, will change. But let me tell you something. You are a product of your environment. I hosted a wedding two years ago, and the man, the father of the bride, when it was time for him to talk, he said, the reason why I am happy with Miss my daughter is because she's very obedient. People now say, why? He said, because I told her to study engineering, and today she's an engineer. I said, stop. He said, why? I said, my father told me to study medicine. I obeyed, but my brain did not obey me. <laughs> because when my result came out, physics, F9. Bob. Chemistry, you know when you fail a subject so much that they decide to seize your results so that they will not embarrass your family. 
So I say it's not obedience, sir. Because you are a product of your environment. Like I told people before, say, why are people in the... Lagos here, let me see your hands up. Lagos, yeah. Now you know that the eyebrow area, is going lucky and oh, if this thing go down again, Gee. we go down with it. <laughs> you know why those people? Why those people, right? They were taught poems in Queen's English. Now, if you grew up in those areas, you probably know some of these poems. How many of you know? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And don't be late. You see, yes, these people on our fourth finish for nine, ten. I grew up in Oju Elegba. Anybody Oju Elegba here? Oju, Oju, Oju. So nobody is raising an abi. God know your zip code, though. Oju Elegba. Why you grew up in Oju Elegba? All those words are taught in Yoruba. Instead of one, two, buck match, we did one, wami, wale, two, three, four. You read it aggressively so they know that you are very angry. Why you people were reading? There are two black birds sitting on the wall. One name, one name, fly away, fly away, come back, come back, but oh, we have finished for this place. I said, Oh, come back. <laughs> Why people were reading that we, our own, oh, you're the best time. Hey, yeah, Melo. Paco, all of you, Paco. God has helped you. So how will you read a poem like that and you become a doctor? We did jam. Jam was jamming us. Nobody in my area became a doctor. The doctors were from Ikoi, VI, and all those places. God has helped us. But at this point, uh, whether they are doctors or not, but at least God helped me. I applied to study at the prestigious Oxford, and my application was accepted. The Oju Elegba branch. Because they didn't give me visa for the one in London. But that being said, at least I have my blue passport now. Nobody can take that from me. You better put them hands together.